going to be April 10. This is the commentary for April 10, 2018. From, huh? This is from St. John. Aho! God bless you. This is going to be from St. John, chapter 3, verses 7 to 15. This is the time when Nicodemus went to visit Jesus. Okay? So, uh, we just celebrated Easter. We finished the Easter octave. And what is the next feast that's coming up uh, after Easter? Something. Huh? Before the ascension. Uh, the divine mercy was passed. <laughs> and then that's not, that's not the mystery we're trying to uh, celebrate. Huh? No, what was the promise of our Lord when He goes? It's going to be the Holy Spirit, Pentecost, right? So, so, um, um, oh, that's right, Joe. That's right, the Ascension first. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> the Ascension first and then the coming of the Holy Spirit uh, 10 days after Ascension. Okay, that's right. Yeah, but anyway... Uh, we will be hearing plenty of plenty of uh, the readings in the Gospels these coming weeks about the Holy Spirit. So today we have that. Okay. So Nicodemus went to Jesus at night, okay? and uh, and this is the how the conversation uh, came, uh, came to be. You must be born from above, Jesus tells him. You must be born from above. The wind blows where it wills, and you can hear the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So our Lord is talking about the Holy Spirit. And to give an image for Nicodemus, who could perhaps not understand what Spirit means, Holy Spirit means, and what, what it means to be born again of the Spirit, the, our Lord uses uh, the metaphors, uh, such as wind and things like that. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can this happen? Right, Referring to, how can one be born again? Does one have to go back to his mother's womb to be born again? Okay? But that is not what our Lord was talking about. And that's why he said, You know, you're a teacher of Israel, but you do not understand this. Amen, amen. I say to you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. But people do not accept our testimony. So what is it that Jesus is saying? We speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. See, Jesus is the second person of the Blessed, the Blessed Trinity. So he knows about the Holy Spirit. This is what he's trying to say. Okay? That he has intimate knowledge and understanding of the Holy Spirit. But people like Nicodemus, even if they were the learned uh, people of Israel, the teachers of the Jews, uh, um, they had no understanding of what the Holy Spirit, who the Holy Spirit is. Because it is only now that Jesus is revealing the fact of the Holy Spirit. The, 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 the Jews knew about the Father because that was the image in the Old Testament that was being uh, developed all throughout by the prophets, God the Father, and that God the Son was going to be the Word that would become flesh, right? But this idea of the Holy Spirit was hazy. It was not very clear, right? Although there were some uh, allusions to uh, uh, to the Holy Spirit, it was not very clear. So now our Lord is trying to explain it to them better. And he's saying that, well, what I'm telling you is true because I have personal knowledge of the Holy Spirit. So, uh, uh, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so does the Son of Man be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Okay. So here he's talking about an intimate knowledge with the Holy Spirit and that the fact that he was the son of man who was to uh, come down on earth to save mankind. Okay? So this is a continuation of where our Lord said, you have to be born again. 
which Nicodemus did not understand. But born again here, our Lord refers to being born again of the Spirit. To be born of the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? How can we understand that? So, okay, we know from this revelation that there is a third person in the Blessed Trinity, which is the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit, as some fathers of the church have called him, is the great unknown. The great unknown, because there's very little that we know of the Holy Spirit. And that is very understandable, because it is difficult to understand a spirit. That's why our Lord says it's like the wind, right? You know it's there, you can perhaps feel it, but you can't see it. So you can't put a, a handle on it. It's, it's so hard to imagine even what the Spirit is. But just be convinced and believe that He exists. That's like what our Lord is trying to tell Nicodemus here, right? He exists. But I understand you have no idea of what the Spirit might be because... Uh, because, well, we are, we are made of flesh, right? We can understand the relationship of flesh and blood like ours to a man like Jesus. That is why he became man, so that we can have a more intimate understanding of Jesus as the second person of the Blessed Trinity. It's easy to understand what the God the Father would be like, because we all have fathers, Right? And we can understand the image of having a father. But the Holy Spirit, hey God, the Holy Spirit, that's a little tougher. Right? That's a little tougher. And that is why even the fathers of the church, they call him the great unknown. Okay, but what is the, what is the special role of the Holy Spirit in our lives? Okay? What's the special role of the Holy Spirit in our lives? Well, the Holy Spirit... Hi, William. <laughs> Anything I can do for you? No. When you say about the Holy Spirit, sounds good. Oh, <laughs> come in, join us here. <laughs> come in here. <laughs> okay, have a seat. Have a seat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, well, the Holy Spirit is is for us, okay, uh, the giver of grace. The Holy Spirit is the source of grace. Okay? He is the third person of this Trinity that was promised by Jesus Christ to us. That when he leaves this earth, he was going to send the advocate. He was going to send God, the Holy Spirit, to us to guide the church, to guide the apostles, to guide each and every one of us. Okay? And, and uh, the Holy Spirit is the one who will give us the, the graces that we need to carry on this life of faith that has begun with the introduction that we have with Jesus Christ. Okay? So when Jesus Christ inaugurated his church, he inaugurated his, his ministry, he inaugurated his presence in each and every one of us. Okay? When he left earth, when he left this world, he did not completely disappear, right? Uh, first, he left the Eucharist with us, right? His own body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. But more than that, he also promised the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the giver of gifts, the giver of gifts, the giver of grace. Okay? So that is the main, uh, the main role of the Holy Spirit in our souls. So... The Holy Spirit gives us grace. Now, what is grace? What does grace do for us? Huh? What is grace? Let's see. Who, who remembers the catechism? What is grace? The gifts of God. Huh? Okay, the supernatural gifts of God that enables us to... Uh-oh, it looks like we have to review the definition. Huh? Okay, but let's stop there. Let's stop there. They're gifts from God, right? They are enabling gifts that come from God, right? that come from the Holy Spirit. Okay? 
they are the kinds of gifts that make us capable of doing two things, basically. Number one, of sanctifying us, okay, making us holy. And the other side of it is it enables us to do good things, okay, to do good work. So those are the two basic things that grace does to our soul. Okay? It makes us holy and it helps us to do good things. It helps us to, uh, to, to live the virtues. Okay? To live the virtues. And those graces come to us in various ways. Right? The Holy Spirit has gifts. What, how many gifts does the Holy Spirit give us? The seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, right? For one thing. So, and then, uh, uh, so, and, and how else does, does uh, how else does um, the Holy Spirit give us, gives us grace? How else does it happen? What is the most fundamental source of grace? The sacraments, right? The sacraments. Beginning from the sacrament of? Baptism. Baptism, which confers... What kind of grace? Sanctifying grace okay, in our soul. Now, all the sacraments, they do the same thing. They confer sacramental grace on us. Right? Uh, so it gives us sanctifying grace. Now, each sacrament, how many sacraments are there? Seven. Seven sacraments. Each of these sacraments also confer sacramental grace. Okay? The grace that is proper to the sacrament itself. Okay? Like confession is, well, the sacrament, well, the grace we get from confession is the, well, contrition and forgiveness from our sins, right? Baptism enables us to become heirs of heaven, children of God, okay? And takes away original sin, right? So those are the different kinds of graces that come with a particular sacrament. Now, but there's also such a thing as actual grace, so what is actual grace this time? Hmm. So there's sanctifying grace, which helps us to be holy. And then there is actual grace, which... Actual, from the very term itself, actual. What does the Holy Spirit give us there? Ajo? It enables us to do good things. Okay, sometimes, you know, uh, uh, a good way to imagine grace is, it is like, it is like your, um, you know, just to give you an image or an idea about it, it. It's like the nutrition that you get from food, right? The nourishment of the soul, that's what grace is. It gives you the energy, the, the uh, capability to, uh, to be holy. Actual graces, on the other hand, are like boosters, right? They are like they are like vitamins, that extra push that God gives us in order to help us do good things, in order to help us do charitable acts. Sometimes it helps us; it helps people uh, give them a push for conversion. Uh, sometimes it's a push to uh, get enlightened about about their sins and understand the wrong things they're doing. See? So. There are many different things that uh, uh, sometimes it's the grace to study, like what we're doing here, right? The grace to be able to study at this moment and, and really understand our, our uh, subject matter that we're tackling. Sometimes that is actual grace. Okay? So those are basically the two, uh, the two ways, the two kinds of graces that, uh, that God, through the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit gives our soul. Okay? Now, one practical lesson that we could uh, learn from this particular gospel is that we should try to be close to the Holy Spirit. Okay? Uh, we have to try to ask the Holy Spirit all the time to give us the necessary graces we need for our soul. Not only the grace we receive through the sacraments, so every time we go to confession, every time we receive our Lord in Holy Communion, okay? uh, and by the way, every time we pray, there's also such a thing as grace that comes through, through the sacramentals, see? which is actually practically actual graces. See? In anything we do, 
whether it be availing of a sacrament or doing good things or doing the ordinary things of everyday life, we can always ask the Holy Spirit for grace. Make it an active part of our daily prayer to ask the Holy Spirit for grace. That is why, what do we do before we even begin our school day? What do we do? Pray. To who do we pray? The Holy Spirit, precisely, right? Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful. Enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created. And thou shalt renew the face of the earth, etc. Right? So we ask the Holy Spirit to open our minds, to enlighten our minds, that we may be open to his grace and that we may be able to conduct our affairs of the day, uh, always giving greater glory and honor to God. Okay? So devotion to the Holy Spirit is something that we can uh, put into practice. And this is a good Catholic practice that we should always remember to do. Good okay? Any question. Yeah, good practice of any question. By the way, <laughs> folks, I want you I want to introduce you to William. Oh. <laughs> Hi William. <laughs> William William uh, is is uh, is helping us here at home with uh, some construction work that we're doing. We're building a shed somewhere there in the backyard, and William is helping me. I'm going to be going out there to work with him in a few minutes. And uh, well, uh, he heard us doing these commentaries today here, so he says, uh, uh, you know, he wanted to join in. So that's William for you. There's a couple of wonderful things about the Holy Spirit. Huh? Okay, right. why don't you share something? It mentions that n nobody can give your spirit to somebody else. You cannot give your spirit to somebody else. Uh -huh. That just doesn't, it's in impossible. Uh -huh. But God gave his spirit. His spirit. Uh -huh. And that ought to be a supernatural thing to us. So we yeah. know we have this direct connection with God. Uh -huh. And the Holy Spirit does three things. He first makes us aware of God. Uh -huh. And then he shows us the paths how to what we need to read and study know to get him and then he gives us special graces to huh? function in a life that is pleasing to him and, and others will notice yeah very true see that's basically sanctifying grace and actual graces see so very good thank you very much william <laughs> okay so that's the first thing we're going to comment about today okay we'll uh, we'll end this one and we'll be back in a few minutes to do the other one Okay? Bye, Bye for now. Bye!